habits Hispanic families have that I don't like. In this video, I'm going to go in detail of some of the habits that Hispanics families have that have been going on for generations and generations. Thank you for watching. This is a Superman of Real Estate where we talk real estate life and entrepreneurship. And let's get right to it. All right, guys. So this question has been going on. I've been thinking about it. I've been meditating on how can I put this out on social media. And here's the truth, guys. I come from a Hispanic family. My parents were immigrants to this country. And there is a set of generational habits that continue on throughout generations. Um, just an example, not in my family, but in some, a lot of Hispanic families, the mom gets pregnant at a very young age, let's say around 14 or 15 years old. That's just something that I've seen so many times in Hispanic families. And then the daughters, the same daughters, when they're around the same age, they end up getting pregnant at the same age. And why does this happen? It happens because we have these generational habits or generational curses, I would call them. And we don't talk about this. This is a taboo that we don't talk about in the Hispanic community. And I wanted to go over a couple of different um, things or habits that Hispanic families have that I don't like personally, that I'm trying to change. And the reason why I talk about this is because I'm trying to change these same habits in my own family. So number one, one of the very bad habits that Hispanic families has, have is that they don't focus on education. What do I mean with this? Hispanic families, what do they do? They have their kids, their kids go to just any elementary school. They don't have their kids come home and create a habit of reading or going over math problems. Hispanic families, what they do, they don't have that habit. They just come home, they put the kids to play, or they go and watch a lot of TV. And education is very important if you want to progress in this life. And the reason I talk about this is because in my family, we had a very similar situation in a s similar situation and there is a reason why hispanic families usually majority of the parents both of the parents some of the both of the parents have to work so in my family my mom had to go to work every morning to make ends meet my dad would be sleeping by the time i left through the door to school when i came back i wouldn't see my dad till the next day or until his day off because he would get off from work around 10, 11 p.m. So never saw my parents. And when I, when I would come home from, from school, the first thing I would do is eat and watch TV. And I never had him, they would always say, Ricardito, Ricardo, I want you to get good grades. I want you to do this. But they didn't understand how to help me become educated. And this is one of the habits that we don't talk about as Hispanic families. We don't really care sometimes. Maybe it's not that we don't care. Maybe it's that we're just ignorant in that way, that we don't want our children to grow, to get the best education, uh, to put them in sports, to help them get the opportunities that other kids have. And I'm just gonna say the, uh, the hueritos, the white folk, right? They have better opportunity, the kids, get better opportunities and therefore since they they practice that they get ahead of the hispanic family or the hispanic kids and uh it is a taboo uh conversation to talk about but i wanted to point that out so the first one guys is we as hispanics we lack focus on education all right guys so number one we don't focus on education and this leads me to the second one which is parents are always working. And the reason is usually the Hispanic families are the ones that are on the lower end. They're the ones that have lower incomes, the ones that always get the free lunch because there is not enough income. And what, what does this do to the family? So mom is working, 
example, my family, my mom was working in the casinos. She was a, a, a housekeeping maid. My dad was a chef in the casinos. So I would never get to see my dad. I would only see him about once or twice a week. So because they were working, they never had enough time to sit down and teach us um, habits, some of these better habits. Uh, there is no time. So if you're missing the mom, she's at work. If you have the dad at work as well, who is technically raising your children? Think about that. Who is raising your children? The media. All of the his majority of Hispanic families, the media is raising your children. TikToks, social media, Facebook, whatever videos your kids are watching, that is what they're actually learning. It's kind of sad, guys. We don't have time because we need to make ends meet. And that is why we don't have or we don't focus on helping our, ch our children because we're too busy working. One of the other habits that Hispanic families don't tend to do is to set goals. And he, I, I guess there's a reason. We come from a different country, maybe just not Mexico. We have different countries, Cuba, Venezuela, Guatemala. You have so many different other countries, Chile. And you come to the United States, you come to the Yuma, the Cubans call it La Yuma. Uh, we come here and we focus, we want what's best for us. But what's best for us in, in our own country, when we come here and we get it, we get our food, we have food on the table, we have a roof over our heads. That is all that we accomplish because it was better than it, we were better than we were before in our countries. Because in some countries, Cuba, don't have any food. Um, Mexico, some parts, there is not en a enough food. So once you come to the United States, you come, you become the robot that the, the government wants you to be. And you forget to set higher goals, to set higher horizons. And you live in a comfortable state. And you become comfortable of just because you were better than you were at your country and you become comfortable. So Hispanic families, a lot of them don't, a lot of us don't like to set goals and we get comfortable with what we have already. And what happens when we become comfortable? Our progression stops, our learning stops. If you never educate yourself or learn or grow, then your income will always be the same. So if you want to increase your income, you have to increase your self education. But since we're so comfortable in here, we're never going to grow. So that is one of the other bad habits that Hispanic family have. have. All right, guys, this is a very big one. I've consistently seen families go through this same routine, the same the same thing that happens over and over. And here's the deal, even some of, some other uh, some other type of families. Usually Hispanic families do not have what's called a family trust. They don't have a testament of who's going to take over the properties. And what does this happen, guys? Usually, so there is a I've been listening to a podcast and it was talking about gener how to create generational wealth, right? So when you don't create a family trust, there was a, I think it was the Rothschilds, not the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. So the Rockefeller family, when Rockefeller passed away, 70% of his wealth was not passed on to future generations. Why? because Rockefeller did not have a family trust in place. So guys, it is very important for us Hispanic families to have a family trust so that you can clarify what is who what's who's going to receive what how much monies are going to be distributed between the family 
so that the generational wealth can continue on. If not, guys, the government, the, the courts will keep majority, the attorneys will keep majority of the wealth and you won't be able to receive that benefit. So guys, please, if you don't know where to start, you can message me and I will contact you uh, with some attorney. Um, if you live in a different state, I will try to find an attorney for you, but connect with someone that can help you create what's called a family trust. In the family trust, it's gonna talk how many properties do you have? How much money will be distributed between the people, be, be, between the, the, the kids? And then this is where you can also put different law, different uh, morals. An example, if one of the kids turns out to be a drug addict, turns out to go and get prostitutes, starts to do a bunch of alcohol, and just starts ripping through the money, should that kid continue to receive the funds from the family trust so that's something you need to talk about in your family so guys go home tonight get your family together get a family plan together of what you guys are going to do so that you can continue to transfer that generational wealth all right guys this is a big one we all know what a quinceanera is and here's the truth guys stop spending all this money on quinceañeras. I've seen people spend $5,000, $10,000, $50,000. Once I attended a quinceañera that they had spent over $50,000 on a quinceañera. Why? I just don't understand why would you spend that much money on a quinceañera? Doesn't make sense, guys. So within the Hispanic, it is a tradition it is a habit that we always have. Oh, I want a quinceanera. I want to have all these people here. I want to have food. I want to have a dance. That is great, guys. Don't get me wrong. It, it's good to experience, but limit yourself a little bit on the funds that you throw at it. There's some people that get even into debt to be able to give their kids a quinceanera. If you can't afford it, guys, don't be spending tens and thousands of dollars on quinceanera. Another big one, a lot of Hispanic families love to do big parties. They spend thousands of dollars on food, on alcohol. For what, guys? It's just a bad habit that we have as Hispanics, and we're just running through the money, spitting the money out. All the money that comes in goes out, and you don't keep any money for yourself. So guys, stop spending a lot of money on quinceañeras. Instead of spending that money on quinceañeras, Buy yourself, your daughters, a car. Get some money for future education. Buy him some books. Make your daughter go into some sort of um, class or personal development. That's going to help him far more than a quinceanera party. All right, guys. So a couple of years ago, when I started real estate, I... There was this training from my brokerage and I was in a, in a brokerage where majority of the people were there were Hispanic. And there was this guy who came to this event and he spoke and he told us the story. He said he started to sell cars. He was a car salesperson. So he was at the lowest rank. He wasn't selling any cars. He wasn't making any money. And what ended up happening was the manager came around with this individual and he said, let's say Bill, Bill, what's going on? He showed him his name. His name was at the very bottom of production. He had zero sales, zero car sales. This is what the manager told Bill. He said, Bill, I want you to take a whole month off from work. Buy yourself a bunch of books. But not just any books, guys. Don't buy any Twilight, Harry Potter. Uh, don't buy these type of books. Buy books that will change and elevate your mindset. Okay? Example, Think and Grow Rich. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Atomic Habits. The Magic of Thinking Big. Guys, The Magic of Thinking Big. This is a book that changed my mindset. 
my first year in real estate, I made $20,000. And I really think because of this book, my income went from $20,000 to over $100,000 because I read this one book that changed my life. And right now, as we speak today, I am reading one of the best books that I've read in a long time, Atomic Habits. That has changed my life completely. So what, is, what do these books do for you? They elevate your mindset. They increase your capacity to think. And what happens, it's precept upon precept. So you start with an idea, and then you start to build the idea with all of these books. And then you start to make connections between the books, between the, the education that you receive from the books. And then you, your, your brain reaches a new level of understanding. And then now with that new level of understanding, you can go out and make more money. Um, you can go and make a new business. But a lot of the Hispanic community, we lack that self personal development uh, aspect to our lives. So guys, I plead with all of you guys, start focusing on your personal development. You want to start investing in real estate. You want to open a business. You only have a thousand, two thousand dollars. This is what you should do. Improve yourself, improve your self image. If you get, you, if you need your teeth to be white, whiten your, your teeth, get better glasses, buy yourself some new clothes so you can boost your confidence. Go attend a seminar that will elevate your mindset. Before you start investing in any other business, in any other, if you're gonna start flipping houses, before you do that, guys, focus on you. Focus on yourself, focus on the growth. And I guarantee you guys, if you only have between one to $5,000, spend that money on yourself. Like I said, reading books, seminars that will elevate your mindset, clothes that will elevate your confidence, try out a new hairstyle, something that's going to boost your confidence and help you be more productive and to push more. All right, guys, this is a big one between the Hispanics. Uh, there's a story that my dad told me when I was a kid. The story goes like this. There was a man who was walking down the beach and he was carrying two buckets. And in the buckets, he had crabs. And there was two buckets. One bucket was covered with a cloth and one of the other, the other bucket was exposed. There was no cloth. There was nothing. And a man came to this man and he said, what do you have here, sir? And he said, well, I have two buckets of crabs. And he asked, okay, so tell me why this bucket is covered and this bucket is uncovered. Well, he said, let me show you. So he uncovered the crabs on his left and they started to see that these crabs would help each other out. And then eventually they would crawl out of the, of the bucket. And he said, how interesting. And then he said, but wait, let's look at this bucket. So they turn around and every time one of the crabs would start to crawl out of the bucket. Another crab would come and pull him down. And he said, it's very much like uh, the Hispanics. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to assume it like it's the Hispanics. This bucket is like the Hispanics. When one of us starts to see success, we start to envy that person and we start to pull him down instead of elevating them, instead of pushing them, instead of motivating them, we start to push them down because we can't stand that they are better. They're getting better than us. And this is bucket is full of uh, Asian crabs or Jewish. Uh, the Jews very, um, very interesting. What the Jews do is they open a business. They, they gather, they gather together. And they're like, okay, Billy, you're the next one. We're all going to save money as a group. And we're going to give you all the money and you're going to start your, your business. And very, very interesting fact as well. 
once he opens his business, all the people from the group, if it's a certain trade, let's say real estate, all that group goes with that guy that they helped. So you see guys, the money stays within, within the, the Jewish community. That is the reason why um, a lot of the Asians or a lot of the Hindu people, a lot of the Hindu people that come over or from India, they come over and they live in the same home, multiple families, they help each other out, they save money, they buy a, a restaurant, boom, that family is set. Now we're gonna save, we're gonna now help this family over here. And that's what they do and that's why they can progress. But I see a lot in the Hispanic community, we envy when someone starts to progress. We get upset that they have what we wish that we had. So guys, stop with this. Stop being envy of the other person. Envy is just showing that you're lacking education and self-confidence in yourself. That's why I talked about the personal development side because as soon as you understand, you can help each other out. This leads me to my next point, which is a lot of the Hispanics do not have what's called connections. We lack connections within the community. Just an example, my dad growing up, I, I, I was thinking about this and I was meditating. We were traveling on the way to Mexico and I asked him, dad, why didn't you never meet any, anyone with money? Why didn't you meet millionaires? Why didn't you connect with them? Why didn't you ask them how they became rich? And he said, well, you know what, son, it's just, it's just the connections I had. Uh, they were just from work, casino workers. And he had a friend who was maybe a little wealthy, not, as, not, not much money, but this guy, he was the most successful person my dad knew. And remember this, guys, the, the closest five people you hang around with, you will become the, the sixth person that has similar incomes, um, mindset. So if you have five friends that they're all drinkers, they don't save money, they don't invest, they don't, they're not about growth, that's who you will become. En español dice, dime con quién andas y te diré quién eres. So you become your friends, you become who you hang around with. And it finally clicked that my dad had stopped his progression because of that reason. Another reason was the language. He wasn't able to connect with other people because of the language. He didn't have the language. He had the language barrier and he couldn't speak with the other people. So that is a big one, guys. Please make connections and don't just be, make a connection and force that person to give you. You have to be able to give value to that person. Let's say example, if I'm a painter and I make a connection with an electrician, I'm gonna go and you know what? I'll paint your house for free. If it's yours, I'll paint it for free. Send me some business, boom. You just increase your referral business that way. But otherwise, you will be stuck forever uh, without making connections. All right, guys, I saved the best for last. Too much TV watching or watching La Rosa de Guadalupe. And what do I mean with this? Uh, we have one of our workers. He works, right? Uh, he gets home around five o'clock and I tell him, okay, hey, what do you do when you get home? And I asked him this question just out of curiosity. I asked him, what did you do when you get home? He says, well, the normal thing that everyone does, I come home. I change or I take a shower, I eat my dinner, and then I sit and watch the news and the novelas. And I'm like, is that all you do? He's like, yeah. I do that till about 10 o'clock. So imagine guys, five hours from five, say four hours, four hours, he gets home. Five hours, four hours watching TV, no personal development, no growth, he goes to sleep, he comes back to work and does it again. And I did the math, guys. I did the math. If you were to watch five hours a day from TV, five hours a day, that's seven days a week, that's 35 hours a week, 
times four weeks, 140 hours a month times 12. You're looking at 1600 hours of watching nonsense. Now get this divided by 24. You have wasted 70 days out of your 365 days in the year watching TV. How much more can you do with 70 extra days? So that's what I mean, guys. Um, you have to be able to keep growing. Stop wasting time on Facebook, on TikTok, watching La Guadalupe, La Rosa de Guadalupe, watching these series. You know, guys, I hate, my wife always wants to put, put on these shows or these series. I hate watching the series because I don't have time to watch them. I say, look, just pull me one movie that I can watch for one hour or two, and that's it. I'm not going to sit there and keep continually watch the season, season three, two, four, blah, blah, blah. I don't have time, guys. There is no time. This life is too short to be watching TV. Focus on your goals. Focus on yourself. Focus on your growth. Focus on becoming a better person. Focus on building generational wealth. Be the change, guys. We have to be the change. We have to cut those generational uh, curses and habits that we have from generations before. We have to stop, guys. Stop those bad habits. Create new ones. Become better. That's the message, guys. I want you guys to be better. I want you guys to push yourself. I want you guys to become better. Because one day, the Hispanics will run this country. I've already seen it. It is a promise that I've seen. We have more Hispanic politicians. We have more Hispanic attorneys. We have more Hispanic police officers, more Hispanic teachers. And one day we will flourish like a flower. Guys, thank you for watching the Superman of real estate.